Rangers. A great week for the New York Rangers. By the way, once again, watch the Good, Bad, the Ugly recaps. We might rename it. We're working on a different name for ourselves, but not the recaps. That's still going to be the Good, the Bad, the Ugly. But Phil will do that either on our Facebook page or he'll be on YouTube to talk all about it. But Phil, great week for the great week for the New York Rangers. Three and one versus Florida, Tampa, and Edmonton. And truth be told, they were 20 minutes away from beating Florida too. But Florida shows why they're one of the best teams in the NHL with the most come behind come from behind wins in, in the third period. Home. Yeah. And on home ice too. Mika Zibanej had four goals last week. Chris Kreider got his 20th goal of the season, surprising the man that's right next to me. As the Rangers improved to 48 points, 22, 8, and 4, and was the best team in the NHL to conclude Monday night. Time kept going after that, so that's not exactly a problem. Yeah, the, the whole stop the count chant would work uh, pretty well. <laughs> but uh, unfortunately, that's not how it works. Um, so if Phil, as I go through all the rest of the, the stats, have the Rangers silence critics this week? Some. Some to a point. Um, they're still not – their record still needs to improve against better teams. They've been playing well. I, I mean, the, the two Tampa games were really good games. Uh, the first 40 minutes of the Florida game I thought were pretty good. It's that last 20. You, you, you got to play full 60 or you, you got to play closer to uh, a, a full 60 to uh, win games. And they, they didn't do it. So they didn't get the points against Florida. Um, Zigor's first game back from injury. And then and it, they, and it showed. Yeah, and it, and it showed. He, he he had two goals that he probably would like back in that game. So um, also they, they did a good job in really shutting down Tampa Bay, especially in the later part of uh, – in the later parts of the game. And then in the second game, they really locked them down. And then they locked down uh, Mick dry against Edmonton and were really good. The fourth line was really good against them. Uh, I mean, this, this whole Strom Lafreniere Goodrow line that's been put together in the absence of Artemi Panarin. Speaking of uh, stepping up Ryan Strom, can, can we finally give this guy some love? Can we finally give this guy some love? You know what? Philk, you're absolutely right. Ryan, you're doing a great job right now this season, and you're certainly showing you might be worth re-signing. And since I'm one of his biggest critics. I think that, he's getting re-signed. I, yeah, I, I, he's I getting re-signed. He doesn't at this point. But um, uh, you know what? It, it, yeah, they, they definitely silenced some. There's definitely some work still to do against some good teams, so you got to keep this going. But uh, those were two playoff teams that they got – six points against and they were convincing wins so yeah i'm just getting that code to anthony so he gets in and you know what yeah that those were convincing wins especially look we could say what we will about the tampa game they blew a lead in the third period again they won it in shootout Ooh, okay but you go to sunday's game and you were even saying it in our group chat they might get shellacked because they weren't, they were going to be without Panarin and they had a couple guys on COVID protocol. God help the Rangers because they were missing Patrick Nemeth. And Ryan instead, uh, oh, yeah, no, they, no, but Ryan Lingren, but I mean, they were missing Patrick Nemeth. That was, yeah, that was a real loss. Um, yeah. this, this team, this, this team responded and they dominated, they dominated that Tampa game. They made Edmonton look silly. Not that it was really that hard. I mean, the team that is only got two wins in their last 11 games. More on that later. But it's just one of those things that you just... This is what you're imagining with the Rangers. And the thing is, they're not firing on our, on our cylinders. No, they're, they're not. And there's some even strength issues that need to be uh, hammered out. And... Uh, it looks like we are welcoming in our uh, the, the last part of the Triforce here, Mr. Anthony Larocco. Did the New York Rangers silence critics this week? Um, I mean they they beat they beat some pretty good teams. So, I, I, but like I always said, you know, I, I said that their team to me in my mind are already a good team. Um, you know, how much of what they did in last week really changed my mind on anything. But listen, they they beat two good hockey teams. 
Um, you know, especially the game against Tampa Bay, I thought they did it pretty convincingly with, uh, you know, Vasilevsky and net, um, you know, team, even if they lose a couple in a row, they, they get back on, you know, on kind of string a couple of wins together. Um, you know, they're, listen, as an Islander fan, you hate, you hate to say it, but you know, they're, they're slowly, you know, slowly maybe developing to a contending team this year. Um, but, you know, I, I still think there are a bunch of teams ahead of them with better chances of, you know, really doing a lot of that. Okay. What's the Rangers' weakness right now, Phil? Weakness, is it's got to be five-on-five five scoring. Uh, I mean, they, they need more even strength offense. Um, their, their defense, it, it tends to be a little sloppy at times, five-on-five five clearing the zone. Um, I, I would say, if anything, that uh, – the face-offs are a big one, as as uh, DP points out here. Face-offs are definitely a weakness. Mm-hmm. Uh, defensive zone coverage can be spotty at times. The power, the, the special teams are great, and then that that's definitely not a problem. But uh, they they definitely need more help of five on five, and they need scoring for the wings. Uh, they need someone other than Mika Zibanejad, Chris Kreider, and Artemi Panarin um, to really be. Uh, a, a consistent scorer, Ryan Strong. All right, so outside of Ryan Strong, so they're top four players. They need more depth to start scoring. The third line has to finish on some chances. Um, it would be nice if the fourth line could pop in a goal or two here or there, but the third line needs to, to score, and they need more scoring out of the bottom six big time. Well, plenty of work this week from Barkley Goudreau, who had three goals against, uh, I think all of them against his former team, and he he's he's looked like the player that they signed down is he going to be worth that contract? Probably, probably never. But he's they're going to need him to be a bottom six forward, not uh, – I think he filled in the Edmonton game on the second line, right? Yeah, he, he was – he's been playing on the second line in the two games without um, Artemi Panarin, the, Tampa, the second Tampa game and the Edmonton game. So the, the line that's been created, that second line, is Brian Strom with our, uh, with uh, Alexi Lafreniere and Barkley Goodrow, and that line has looked really good. It's even gotten to the point where some fans are saying third-line Breadman when Breadman gets back. And if you could have – could you imagine? I don't think it'll happen, but if you had Artemi Panarin on your third line with Philip Hedl and, I don't know, Julian Gauthier – uh, and that second line continues to produce with Ryan Strom, Alexi Lafreniere, and Barkley Goodrow, then you have three lines that could score, and then this team becomes even more dangerous. Because then you have a matchup nightmare, because what are you going to do? You have Mika's advantage at Chris Kreider's line, you have Ryan Strom's line that you got to worry about, and then you got Artemi Panarin's line you got to worry about. So... I just, I just find it funny that the idea of moving Panarin down, and again, I would say it's a top nine, not a top six. Then, yeah, it would be, it would be a top nine. It wouldn't be a top right, six point. but like the 2014 Rangers. I do think there's a bit of a chance to move that over. And now that we forgot Anthony back and fully functional, um, Anthony, what do you think is the Rangers' weakness right now? You, you would say. Um, yeah, I was having Wi-Fi. My my Wi-Fi is so much better on my laptop than my iPad. It doesn't make any sense. But um, <laughs> ho- hopefully, hopefully it's a little better now. But um, I was saying before, I think that their weaknesses they just need some more scoring throughout their lineup. Um, you know, until they start getting you know steady production from guys like Lafreniere and Kako. You know, Heedle's really underperformed. They really need you know another guy to kind of go with Panarin, Zibanejad, Kreider. Um, who's scoring consistently. So adding another player, I'm not, you know, like Phil Kessel or, or someone along those lines. Uh, you know, we mentioned Joe Pavelski before, what happened to Dallas. Just they need I think they just need a little more scoring throughout the lineup. But um and then obviously the the, the defense issue. They need Nemeth is a tire fire. Um so they can they could definitely improve over him and guys like Hayek at a, a better depth defenseman. Um, I would say those are the really only two weaknesses in my in my eyes right now. Yeah, I mean, and the, again, the funny thing about this team is they're they were number one in the NHL. They're they're knocking on the door at the division uh, lead, and you know what? They're not firing on all cylinders yet. They're not done. There's going to be plenty of work that has to be done, and it's probably going to start about a month from now when the trade deadline starts coming in, because usually that's when teams start making yeah. moves, and it, that's much. where it's going to be. Anthony, you were saying? No, I just said pretty much. I mean, trade deadline's March 21st. Um, I, I think, you know, sometime in the middle of February, you might see some 
traits start to, you know, start to occur. Um, but, Besides you know, the minor one today with Alex Nylander. Yeah, yeah, um, for Lafferty, right? Um, yeah. I was going to say, know, just wait for the uh, for the annual Jim Rutherford uh, yeah. month or two early special. I just think a lot, of teams, a lot of teams right now um, – it's still view it as there's so much time left. Um, even your, you know, even your sellers like Arizona. Um, I know there was LeBron and Drugger were talking about Chickering over, you know, the, over, I think the last day or so, but um, even a team like them, as bad they are, there's, there's no incentive for them to really trade them. Now you might as well wait closer to the trade deadline. So I don't think a lot of teams feel that way. Um, there's no sense in rushing to make a trade right now. You might as well wait till it gets a little closer to deadline and teams are get a little more desperate and willing to give up a little more. So um, might have to wait a couple more weeks to see a, a significant move. I'm just going to address this comment. Then we'll break and we'll go into the B block for the Islanders. But Hikako has been producing a lot as far as like turn uh, takeaways and stuff like that. And defensive pressure, he's doing a lot of things right with that. It's just his, his contributions have not been showing up on, the traditional stats every fan cares about goals, assists, points, and we'll, we'll see about that. But it's, I, you know, he, he does have to pick it up, though. I, I will agree with that a little bit. Pick it up a little bit and not really that much. Guys, what do you think about the New York Rangers being the number one team in the league? And also, are they a contender right now? Of course they are, but the question is, are they really a contender? Throw it all down in the comments below. If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out. Any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.